such as Canoe. So to the leaders of Canoe, I want to express my uh, appreciation for your uh, willingness to choose and invest in Oklahoma uh, for several of your facilities, including this one, which is magnificent. We look forward to working with you to ensure that business thrives and prospers in the state of Oklahoma. We know the mission of bringing electric vehicles to everyone, which is Canoe's mission, won't be easy, but I believe that Canoe and you, Tony, are up to the task. So in closing, I just want to thank everyone who was involved uh, working together to make uh, this facility a reality for Canoe and to, to, to invest here in prior Oklahoma. Your efforts are noticed, and I'm confident that these investments will bring increased economic activity and development to the area, job creation, and also a uh, higher standard of living for the community uh, here in this area. So once again, I congratulate Canoe on your new facility and look forward to watching it flourish and thrive in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, one of the reasons that we're so successful when we attract companies like Canoe is we have great partners. And it turns out that the access to uh, alternative energy and renewables is critical now as we look at ESG standards and products that need to be uh, carbon free and so on. So uh, one of our great partners, Grand River Dam Authority, Dan, would you come up? I uh, can't say enough about uh, your part our partnership and how, how much you help. So I'll give you the podium. Thank you, Dave. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dan Sullivan, the CEO of the Grand River Dam Authority. And it's a great day to be here. <clears throat> I was just thinking about uh, what all this means. And one thing that, I, I, that really came to my mind, Tony, was that at the beginning, one person's vision is not another person's reality. And as that vision adds form and substance to it, then we all have a shared reality. This is becoming the shared reality of Canoe, <clears throat> what it means to Northeast Oklahoma, what it means to the whole state of Oklahoma and this whole region. You know, the, the Grand River Dam Authority was created in 1935, and, and through that vision of what it would be to have a hydroelectric power facility in Oklahoma, the first facility was built at Pensacola Dam <clears throat> that creates Grand Lake. That vision then led to power being generated in 1940 and was sent here to the Oklahoma Ordnance Works for the war effort in building uh, munitions for the war. Then that vision continued in 1960. Uh, the, the War Department turned this facility over to the state as a trust and it became what is now known as the Mid-American Industrial Park. So we have been literally connected with this facility from the very beginning. Uh, we continue to provide electricity from that hydroelectric facility uh, at Grand Lake uh, and our other facilities as well. And what that has led to is a vision of how this, this whole area could be changed. You know, a, a lot of us this week are thinking about resurrection and new life, and that's exactly what's happening here. Uh, we're seeing new life coming to this area that what once was an area of igloos that was used for powder, powder uh, containment and now is being turned into industry. The electricity that we provide, the low cost, reliable, uh, green energy that comes from GRDA is the, literally the power of industry. So we're looking forward to the opportunity of continuing that relationship to assisting you and your company and all the other companies here and to continue to thrive. Um, we are glad that that reality is a shared reality now among all of us. So it's a great day to start this and we appreciate your efforts and thank you for your partnership. Uh, I never will forget uh, when I, I met Tony, he came in, and of course we're in sales, right? It's like we're trying to tell him all the reasons to come to America. And uh, we took him to the Welcome Center, we had everything up there, and he saw the map where he saw Bentonville on one side and Tulsa on the other, and right in the center was Mid-America. And he talked about, that's where I want to be because everyone else is going where they have been going. I want to go where they're not going. And he articulated that very well, a lot better than I could, and I'm a sales guy. So anyway, uh, the, the relationship has developed since then. We've learned a lot about the EV business, uh, the battery business, as you know, uh, you've probably seen the paper, so 
It's a very dynamic industry. It's new to us and new to the world. And Tony, uh, uh, his technology and his insight has, uh, with, with Canoe, uh, we were very attracted to that because it, it, it was a step into that new high-tech industry. And if you look at Mid-America, typically we're more industry-based, chemical-based, and production-based. But we need to move into the next century and, and be more high-tech. So we were very attracted to Canoe, and I'm glad you were attracted to Mid-America, Tony. Uh, so we're going to do just, uh, we're going to let Tony talk about this facility. Uh, it's a battery module facility that is becoming more important in the industry, as it's the canister of energy for the vehicle. Uh, and it's designed uh, not only in the public market, but also in the government market, is, in, is important as it evolves. And one thing neat about Tony's vision, Tony is, a, is very good at timing. And as the industry evolves, you can't hit the market too early. Uh, because if you, hit, if you hit it too early, you don't know what's going to be right around the corner and you miss the opportunity. And the heavy investment in manufacturing and all the technology needs to come out to market at the right time. So I think, Tony, your vision is fantastic. Uh, you, you look at it in a very special way, we, and we appreciate you here, and I'll give you the mic to talk about this facility and your vision for what's going to be here. So first of all, thank you, Chad, for coming out and seeing us, Mr. Secretary, and you know, when I came here, and we had already had a pretty strong view about this spot. And it was kind of ironic that nobody had actually captured the value that these guys had built here. And I think what Dave has done is, has been pretty phenomenal. We searched many states uh, for our sites. And we, here, you had more infrastructure, more workforce capability, you had so many things and you had hydropower. We had a view early that you cannot use fossil fuels to build battery, clean energy. It's like, it's a net neutral, right? It just doesn't make sense. So we wanted to really focus on a place that had, we were gonna be the innovator, which means, you know, we're gonna get punched in the face a few times. And, uh, but you, otherwise you can't really imprint uh, a new kind of culture of building and advanced manufacturing. So originally, we had planned to be working on the site uh, where we will uh, be building the mega factory here. Uh, MAIP was building this building, and it sprung the idea of us bringing an advanced uh, battery assembly line in here. Um, and, and so that means that while we're behind on the mega factory there, we'll announce some more stuff in Oklahoma here the next few days um, but what we did was is we found a way to get the jobs going sooner so we'll invest quite a bit of money here right, right over here we have quite a bit of equipment uh, that has been specially made for this function uh, we'll invest in 2023 about 90 million dollars into the site um, the stuff behind me is pretty expensive and it's special made for, for this use case and they're in high demand. These battery lines are very hard to get. Uh, this was built in Germany. Um, we'll create 110 jobs this year here. So it's, you know, we'll test the workforce. We'll be able to learn before we start the bigger project. So I think it, in the end, it turned out well for us because of the opportunity that Dave and his team gave us with this building, which we will go ahead and kick off. And in 24, we'll add another 100 jobs into this site. And so, and then from there, we'll know how to scale up as we build out uh, the mega site. Um, you know, one of the things that people don't realize in EV is it's like a new footprint of uh, an ecosystem. And, and I think more people will come here, is, is our view. And we encourage people to come see this spot. Um, we've made some introductions and we're proud to see those relationships developing. Uh, but the, the thing that's amazing about EV is that when you create one EV job, you generally will create set up to seven jobs. So instead of like the two 
the 2.7 kind of jobs, it just has a real big effect. If you look at Reno, where the Tesla plant ended up, and what happened to the workforce around that. So the development, because suppliers come, and, uh, and they want to be close. And so it, it works out. And of course, with, with uh, GRDA, it's very attractive as well. Right? We bring it all together. So um, one of the things that will be functioning here is we're very proud to be very American. And uh, you know we have less than 4% of this vehicle comes from China. Um, eventually, it'll be zero. Um, and we found new innovative ways to use just US and allied nations. Um, and we continue to do that, and we will be very committed to that. We were early in that phase. You wouldn't get this far before it was kind of like the in thing. We were ahead of that, that curve. Um, we were fortunate, uh, due to the hard work of our team, uh, to get uh, a Department of Defense contract. Um, we are doing advanced testing for them uh, in a project uh, that those batteries will be built here. Those assemblies will be done here. So that's that's good. Um, we're off to a pretty good start. Some really interesting use cases for this. And something the Department of Defense appreciated is that these will be hydro, you know, this will be a hydropowered environment. So, got a little video for you guys on the Screaming Eagle, which is the U.S. Army's uh, test vehicle that we built for them. And uh, while it looks like a vehicle, this platform can transform into a Screaming Eagle. between all of the stakeholders in the area that influence workforce. And we've been working together for, I don't know, four or five years now. And that's one of the reasons uh, you were attracted to us. Also, the partnership with the Cherokee Nation. What is the timing and the deployment? Could you give uh, yeah. a sense of that? Yes, uh, we'll start hiring here, ramping up in June. I think we had it on the slide. And we plan to be at a, about 110 jobs by the end of the year, give or take a few. Know, as we work through the bumps, but we wouldn't be able to ramp that fast if it wasn't for your training facility. Yeah, and then in addition, 
Uh, we have the Center of Excellence, which, which has equipment. What we're trying to do is to create uh, programs that would gear up and be ready for the EV industry because it's not like working on a car. You know, you, you touch the wrong Right. I mean, it's, it's just completely different. So that having this module plant here allows us to touch and feel that piece of the business and it gets us into higher tech. So I would see us transforming some of our training centers with that kind of specialty along with your help. Uh, maybe, uh, Tony has agreed to do that to allow us to integrate a training facility and programs and develop those as he develops the module plant here. So we are really looking forward to that. So anyway, do we want to go outside or what, uh, what the, would you like to? Yeah, so look, I think, um, yeah, maybe we can do the Q&A. Uh, if somebody's got any specific questions, we'd be happy to answer them. So when is all this stuff coming out of the crates and actually being set up in the building? Yeah, so it was built in Germany, and the assembly of this is precision. Mm -hmm. So when it comes together, there will be a bunch of people from Germany will be coming here to assemble it. And that will start likely, uh, I think it's currently planned for the first part of May. If I heard right in your first quarter shareholder meeting, you delivered your first vehicle to a customer, is that right? Um, no, we didn't say that. Or you no, delivered your first vehicle. We, we, we've done vehicle testing with customers and okay. we delivered to the Army and others. So we... When do you think a, a vehicle will be delivered to a customer? Uh, when will you move to consumers? Yes, mean, yes, to a consumer. Yeah, right now we're pretty backed up on the commercial side. I, I don't, we don't have a, a date yet as to when we'll start putting vehicles into the consumer market. We want to get the infrastructure in place. As you know, many of the early EVs have a lot of problems. Uh, if you give me your address, you'll see one today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That one, you know, we, we are, we're behind schedule there, as I said earlier. Um, but we're working through that right now. Um, we'll be announcing some other stuff in the state. We're very committed to Oklahoma. I mean, I think uh, my father's from here, and you know, it's an honor to, to be working with everybody, and you gotta roll with it. I mean, we've, we've all had some uh, surprises along the way. I'm sure there'll be a few more. But one thing, you know, we feel very strong about is the governor stood by us, you know, the Secretary of Commerce from one to the next as, as they came in, and we stood by that. And that will not change. Are the jobs here that you are going to bring on board in July, are they already posted? Are you taking resumes now, or is that still? Man, that's not in my department. Okay. <laughs> um, so, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, the, the jobs, they'll start posting them in a few weeks. Okay. But there are people that are already being trained that will come here. What is it that you guys saw here that, you know, you didn't pull that same thing, that you're actually yeah. committed to this and extended it? Well, as all of you know in Oklahoma, we didn't come here for the money incentives, just, right? I mean, this is, there are states in, like Canada and others that will just pour money on top of these deals. For us, it was about the long-term development of a workforce and an ecosystem. And I still believe that, I look at the United States like, you know, I've built my businesses to, 96 countries and beyond now. Um, I look at the United States like 50 countries under a flag and a currency. And when you think of that, Oklahoma is one of the best arbitrages of energy, of, of all kinds of sources, not just the people. And so we wanted to be the one, and plus this is the, high, the highest point before water freezes. You can ship by water, rail, road. You're in the middle of the U.S. If you're if you're North America focused, this is where you want to be. So, um, I think you'll see more companies come here and look. We're, we're encouraging it. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, I mean, look, we've put, and I've put a lot of money into the company. You know, we're a couple billion dollars in right now. Um, you know, that'll continue. It takes a bit to build these things, and that's why we're going over these long-term contract type approach with, with the governments, and we just recently announced our entry into the Middle East. Um, obviously, you can see the platform, how it would fit well into those environments. Those, those are actually high growth environments right now, um, while the rest of the world is, is dealing with the effects of a uncertain you know, economic condition. And so it's been tough, um, and we've zigzagged. This, this is an example of zigzagging. In any of my startups, I've never uh, been able to go in a straight line. So. Anyway, it's, um, we're, we're excited to get this going, and uh, you know the Department of Defense uh, modules will come out of here. Can you just tell us a little bit about what will happen where as far as Bentonville or Oklahoma City here? Yeah, I can give you a current view. I mean, we've obviously been zigzagging a bit. Um, we, we're committed to the region, so think of it like goalposts. And uh, we originally thought we could do it all in the mega site um, and develop our micro elements as we geographically expand. Uh, it turned out that that thesis was just not strong enough for us to move fast enough, so we had to start zigzagging. Um, and um, so the current uh, plan is this site is going online. We'll be announcing something else later this week, or early next week. And you know our target is in the state of Oklahoma to be at roughly 700 jobs uh, by the end of the year. Any other questions? Tell me what type of battery module we produce here, and how many vehicles does that So it's not just vehicles, huh? And obviously, you know, when you do work with the Department of Defense, you don't disclose what you do. Uh, what the purposes are, um, but this site will produce, on a vehicle basis, it could produce up to eight jobs per day um, for vehicles at, at 80 kilowatts. However, that said, there'll be many different use cases because we have a modular technology, so it's energy, it's a source of energy and power, so we, we have other use cases, obviously, we're going after. We see the business as many businesses when you create new IP, like you see, the drive by wire, break by wire, etc. Yeah. Several uh, components come in here and assembled and shipped out from here. Tell us about the manufacturing process that's happening. Yeah, so what will happen here, and actually, we just found uh, our manufacturing team realized we can move some more activities here for our door uh, frames. Uh, but the way it'll work here is uh, we'll set up the line and we'll start the implementation, we'll debug it, and, uh, and that'll kind of in tune with the workforce development. So we'll be able to uh, kind of take it from, from there. And then what we'll do is that'll give us, we'll announce later kind of how we're thinking of the mega site. Um, but I want to make sure I, I get all your points. Yeah, that's that's the modular. So it's our IP. Uh, so we have suppliers which make things we design, and those are shipped in and they're queued, and then they go into the assembly line. The batteries come from Panasonic. Let's okay. say I'm, let's say I'm like working in oil and gas right now, and I'm interested in one of these jobs. Are you going to train me here on how to do what you're doing in here? How? How easy can I go from one career to now working for you? That's on an individual basis. Okay. But, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, look, I think the jobs that are here in this part of eastern Oklahoma are organic uh, to people that could really adopt to it, um, is our view. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's high voltage. Huh? It's, no, it's no joke what we do. So these things have to be cared for in a very precision way. Otherwise, somebody can get hurt. So that's why we invested so much money. And I might add to that, well, we'll just figure out what that 
uh, that pattern is and what it takes. So I think it's trans transformational and being developed, but we have the facilities here to do that. We're just going to have to learn, you know, the skill sets and how those, how those transform. Uh, all right, well, we can, uh, we can all go outside and, and flip the switch, if you will. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we can do that.